So, Cobra, and anyone else who's want, who's curious, you want to fly using ILS and TACAM to find the tanker and your air base. The weather's dog shit. You don't know where you are. That's understandable. I'm going to show you a few techniques that I use for navigating around Falcon BMS. Um, these may or may not be the correct procedures as according to real life, but these are the procedures I use, these are procedures that I find work for me. You're welcome to criticize me later. That being said, I'll need a few prerequisites for you. If you do not know how to use and refer to the bullseye, if you do not know how to use the upfront controller, if you don't know how to land the plane in the first place or fly it properly, this tutorial is not for you. I will not be demonstrating those things. I'm going to assume you know those things and you know the concepts behind those things. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you should not, nobody else should be watching the video apart from people who know how to do those things. So, first of all, TACAN. So, TACAN is the Tactical Air Navigation System. Think of it as encrypted VORs or non directional beacons. Um, on the ground, they will show you bearing and range to the VOR or to the TACAN as the case may be. In the air, it gets a little more fun. Uh, it can be used to provide range, but in most cases, it will not provide bearing. So, how the hell do you find the tanker? You don't do it with TACAN. All TACAN does is give you a range and how close you are to it. So all you'll know is if you're getting towards it or further away from it. The simplest way I could tell you how to find the tanker is to know where it is before you take off. Um, I'll show you that in a few minutes when I go into BMS itself. ILS, how to set it up in the cockpit is something I'll also show you when I do the practical in a few moments. And ILS, but to, to talk a little bit about how to use ILS on the bird, you need to understand the, the concept behind ILS. Now, I'm not going to assume you guys don't know how ILS works, basically. ILS will give you a glide slope to follow, and you will just follow it down to the runway. Uh, start with the radio, and if you can think of it as a cross-section that looks like that, and another cross-section that looks like that, if you're too far this way, or too far this way, the needles or the guides on the HUD will, will guide you to steer this way. If you're too high or too low, the needles will guide you higher or lower, as the case may be. And the idea is, is that you see a cross like that, you're on the glide scope, you're too far, and you're, and you're like the correct um, distance. If you're like that, you need to chain, you need to turn left to get it back on the course. If you're too right, you need to turn right to get it back on the course. I apologize if that's back to front, you get the idea. If you're too high or too low, you need to increase or decrease your, your glide slope, you need to control your rate of descent to control that. This should be what you see on your ILS cross, and I'll show you how to adjust that uh, during the practical as well. But how do you figure out how to find the runway and stuff like that when you can't even see it? Because that's what ILS is for, right? How do you find the ILS in the first place? I mean, for all you know, you might be in a situation where uh, your HSD is broken or you're landing somewhere other than your primary base. It's not programmed, you don't see it on your map. That's where the ILS plates come in handy. The awesome guys at Falcon BMS have provided a list of airport approach and navigation charts for every single airport available in Korea. And most decent campaigns have an equivalent for their own camp for their own airport airports as well. They are located in your documents folder inside BMS. If you do not know that already, you do now, and that will be your major your major thing. So let me just quickly switch screens and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this here is, um, I don't, I'm not sure how well this will come up in the feed, but basically you have my home, my C drive, the Falcon BMS folder, the documents folder, the folder that's marked airport approach and navigation charts. You can then specify which where you want to be looking. I'm going to look at South Korea. And each folder here is an airstrip. Uh, I'm going to look at Pohang because you might have noticed me take. Uh, sorry, not Pohang. We'll look at Busan. 
Fuel notes have taken off recently a lot out of Pusan and Kohang as part of UAF, so these are air bases I'm more familiar with. I'll show you how to read the charts that you're looking at. Uh, that's Pohang. Oh. There we have it. There's the chart for Pusan Airport. That's a lot of rubbish there, isn't it? This isn't really going to help you with landing. This is going to help you figure out how to get to the to the taxiway, though. You won't need as much for Pusan, but there's some of the more complicated airfields like uh, Kimpo and uh, Seoul and things like that. This can come in really handy. So once you you also see where the Takan is, so you now understand why you can't just use Takan to guide yourself to the runway because it's all going to be because you're not going to be on the runway. You'll notice it also gives you the course and information for the runways, which is very handy. And your taxiway letters, which are listed when you're in real, when you're in the when you're in the uh, when you're there as well, gives you some uh, some tower frequencies, TACAN channel, and you have some interesting information here, which I'll skip for now. It also gives you the GPS for the center of the runway, I believe it is center of the airbase so if you're trying if you're able to program in steer points and you want to have your HUD point to this to the place you can thumb this stuff in yourself just make sure you thumb in the elevation otherwise uh, your steer point your steer point will hover above or below the, um, the information that you're looking for the transition altitude is 14,000 feet so once you go above 14,000 feet uh, you should be on 29 or 9 or 2 for your uh, barometric altitude. Below that, you can contact the tower for barometric figures, uh, QFE, for example, or QNH is, uh, is I believe, the standard nowadays. Now, uh, that's not very useful for getting there. This might make a bit more sense to you. So here is the instructions to approach runway uh, 14, runway 14. Is there only one port approach? So that's that. No, I might tell a lie. That's your takeoff procedures. So this is how to leave uh, Pusan uh, if you are not visual flying, if you're flying in the soup. It still gives you the same information at the top. So that's your quick reference card for when you're taking off. Here's your information on taking off runway 14, and it gives you the exact information. DME 5 is basically when you are 5 nautical miles, according to the TACAN, away from here. You should be at or above 3,500 feet, and you can make a standard turn. And uh, by the time you complete that turn and turn 180, deg 180 degrees, you will be then able to uh, leave via runway, via radial 020. That's a lot. I'll explain that in a moment too. And join. If you're taking off uh, runway 32, you can then start your turn at two miles away and you'll be able to intercept radio 020 and then you can then fly towards Korav. Once you're 11 miles along this bearing, uh, you'll uh, you'll leave the airspace at Korav. This is if you're flying realistic. Nine times out of ten you probably won't do this. You'll just fly your own steer points. Korav is also the holding point. Now, we in UAF when we were flying in bad weather, we have used holding points and orbits simply to allow planes to land safely. Uh, the AI will just, you just follow AI instructions if you're flying single player. Here is the information on how to land on runway 1. This is runway 14, I believe. No, this is runway 32, sorry. I always get them too mixed up. So, uh, first of all, find this point on the map. I will usually mark it as a pre plan steer point threat. I'll show you that in the 2D map. From there, you are you should see that you are you're on radio radio zero five zero, and you are eleven. If you are bearing zero five zero from the airbase, and you are eleven miles from the airbase, you'd be in the vicinity of this point. You could then orbit there and hold until you're cleared in by ATC. Or by human pilots that you're co that you're coordinating with, and it gives you the bearings and the altitude for holding. Okay. Um, 
from that point if you stay 11 miles and continue in a slow gentle turn never going closer than 11 miles from airbase this is what's known as the DME arc eventually you'll come to a point where you hit uh, a bearing uh, 3-2 and still 11 miles and you should be doing a hard turn and by the time you complete that turn you'll be at 10 miles out you should start picking up ILS at 7 miles out and it gives you the ILS frequency right there and it gives you the localizer heading runway 32 you then follow that all the way in and 2 miles looks to me like just after 2 miles is about the decision point where you should be able to hopefully see the runway at that point you just fly in as a, as a normal landing this is a side on view demonstrating altitudes of the same approach so starting from Kovac you fly your heading so from one right run so from one heading one four round to two thirty you can slowly orbit down from six thousand down to what looks to be about two or three thousand by the time you hit number ten because basically what they're saying is from here you'll start at six thousand and you'll be down to about two thousand feet by this point you must be at 2,000 feet for this to work, by the way. That's why it says mandatory. Glide slope. You'll catch this. You'll start catching the glide slope seven miles out at 2,000 feet off of uh, off of mean sea level, and you'll be on heading 320 from that point onwards. You follow the uh, ILS approach. If by two miles you have not seen the runway, uh, you are then ordered to go around and abort. You can then follow a go around approach or a, a missed approach there. And it tells you to turn back to heading 100, intercept the radio, go back up to Kovac and try the whole thing again. Okay, that's a lot of detail. Here's the same idea, but coming from runway 14. So when you talk to the tower on landing, you might ask it for the landing runway. And I'll show you how that works in a moment too. Once you know which runway to look at, you follow the approach as specified. And this is much the same idea. It's asking you to step down in slightly, in slightly different increments. And I suspect this is to cover the fact that there are some hills and some uh, areas where you, you don't want to be flying at certain altitudes at because you'll hit the ground. Not so happy. Either way, they're saying you, they're like basically guiding you on using TACAN because on this particular runway, ILS only goes in one direction. So that's a TACAN approach. And they're basically saying, Follow these instructions so at 11 miles out, go to 2000 feet. Once you're 10 miles out, transition down to 1800 feet. Follow the headings by 7 miles. You should be then heading down to 900 feet by 5 miles, 700 feet by 3 miles, and so on. So basically, you're stepping down in, in increments. It specifies the minimums here. So basically, if, if you are not able to see, if, 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 at, if at 3 miles out, you are not able to see the runway by 300 by up to 1600 meters in front of you then you have missed it and you should go around and it gives you go around instructions there as well head north turn, make a turn a standard turn north after two miles intercept the localizer uh, uh, sorry intercept radial zero five intercept the heading of zero five zero from the TACAN and head back to Kova and try again so now we're going to fly them I'll fly them both I'll fly them in daylight and I'll fly them in normal weather uh, and then I'll fly the same approaches in crap weather and I should hopefully help okay so here we are in the 2d pit so first of all this is a tactical engagement it may look a little different when you're looking at a campaign but the theory remains the same first of all you slot it up in your f-16 idea of what we're carrying fuel wise and loadout wise there we are just a nice clean f-16 in today's mission we're just going to be flying out of Busan we're going to patrol this area I happen to have placed a tanker here you can see there we will grab some gas and we'll head home okay simple as that now having looked at the ATO under show all packages we can look at C what tasks there are in our campaign this will be full but for us we have an air refueling package so we can look at its flight plan and we see there there's there it is there it just so happens it's on our list so it's a little, it makes our life a little easier 
was. Look, there we have it. Look, it's going for three and four, and that's fine. What I would usually do is I would reserve some steer, some steer point lines for the beta cartridge. It doesn't really matter which. It doesn't have to be a work of art. All it's going to do is give you an area for you to look at. And just like that, I probably won't actually need Takan for the uh, for the KC-135 that's there. But I'll have it anyway. But I'll, we'll, we'll use it the way you're, you're asking anyway. So, getting back to my my flight plan, I uh, knowing knowing now that there is going to be an aircraft, uh, a KC-135 flying here, I then just make sure that my flight plan intersects that area, like so. I just like that I can follow the flight plan and I'm going to be able to turn on my FCR and I know to sweep this area here and I will probably find the tanker. I also know from looking at this flight plan or just from what I know about uh, from what I know about BMS, that uh, BMS tankers tend to have fly at around about 25,000 feet and 300 knots. So just remember that. So we're going to take off in half an hour's time from the airbase. We're going to follow the steer points. We'll hook up to the tanker and connect with it. We'll grab some, some fuel. Doesn't really matter how much this is worth. I've got more than enough fuel in, in, the, in the aircraft to do this. And then we will immediately fly back. Now, to fly our instrument approach, we've looked at the weather. And to make it fair, I've selected inclement weather, which is it's pretty god awful. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we can look at deterministic actually, and we can just. And inclement is the worst weather. Okay. So I've, I've selected inclement weather. It's going to be inclement weather. There's going to be wind, there's going to be rain. It's going to be a pretty shitty afternoon. Uh, I don't know how low they define that as, it might be quite acceptable, it might not be, we'll see. But looking at the, uh, you'll recall we have the iOS plate, I actually have that on my second monitor, you might want to put it on your phone or on uh, your tablet, your iPad, insert ebook reader here, you know, anything that will take a PDF or a picture will be just fine. There's also a few applications, so if you're an Android user, there is actually the Falcon BMS flight bag, which has all of this for at least Korea really happy. But you'll recall from the previous information we have to find Kovac which has been helpfully marked on the map for us. We then follow an 11 mile arc around it. We follow the wrong way in. Boom. And that is our ILS approach. So what you do is you use a few of your planned threat point markers. And we find Kovac Kovic, there we are. I'm just going to place that right on top of the marker right there. So I know to fly towards Kovic. Now, that means even if I don't find ILS or Takan, I know that's where it's going to be. And then, taking my ruler, a little bit of preparation. I know the runway is at runway 320. There we have it. And I know that it needs to be about 7 miles before I will find ILS. If I'm at the right altitude, that is. So at that point, the right there, where the triangle there at one, that's labelled 140 is, is going to be my ILS fix point. Quite simply, that is where I am going to find my ILS. If I find ILS by that time, on, and I'm looking at the map, chances are I've screwed up. Boom. It doesn't have to be terribly accurate. That's going to be accurate enough. And with those two steer point threat markers showing up on my uh, HSD, I have a basic idea what's going on. If I'm feeling extra cocky and I've got, an, uh, I've got myself an extra threat marker, I can even label this as Busan. We also have an alternate here at Kim Hay. Now, if I wanted to, I could start looking at information on how to land at Kim Hay, and I would imagine I'd probably use this Kaduk point or Kachi point for landing. 
we're not going to do that though. We're going to assume that I'm going to land on my airbase. So, let's put ourselves in the sky. Quick double check of everything always. Always, always, always make sure that the relevant channel is set to Busan. And always, always, always make sure that you are correctly wired for sound. For comms. Make sure if you're with a multiplayer flight, you all agree on the same VHF channel. And if you are working out of a single player that you are using a channel that is appropriate. VHF1 channel for single players is usually fine. Let's uh, get ourselves in the sky. Okay. We see there some pretty rough weather. Nothing we can handle though. You see already on the map we've got Kovac, we've got ILS, and we've got Busan labeled right as it should be. Let's get going. You'll notice I'm flying in a block 40. The procedures and the switchology for a block 50 or a block 30 are exactly the same, so don't worry about it. No power. Cowboy 1 1, Kurunshan Tower, you are cleared for takeoff, runway 32. Cowboy 1 1, Kurunshan Tower, resume on navigation. Altitude. Altitude. <clears throat> We're going to go to one two. I start steer two, rather. Now let's have a quick overview of how ILS is going to get programmed in. So, pressing number one on the keyboard, you get, ta you get Takan and ILS screen. I already know that ILS is at 109.5 for Pusan approach. So we just type in 109.5. Enter and the DED is smart enough to know that that is not actually the TACAN. Then you have to tell it what course you're going to be landing on, which uh, according to the plate is 320. Set. As ILS programmed, we need to activate it later. If you want to set, use TACAN, you'd have to press the sequence button to change between air to air. Transmitter sequence and look, or would you know we've got here? So we have we have a tanker showing up. And because I wasn't listening, I didn't catch the camels one one cowboy one one request clearance to refuel. Cowboy one sentry one tanker camel one bearing two nine zero twenty miles tack and channel United Yankee. So what I did there is I changed it to twenty nine. Press enter, press zero to change band, press enter, and then press sequence to select air to air mode. If I look at TACAM, what you'll notice is it's eight miles away from me and the TACAM yardstick is spinning around. It's because we still don't get bearing on this kind of contact, but we at least know if we're getting closer to it or further away from it. You can also see. And if we press return on the home screen, count down there, 3, 2 miles and so on. So let's fall back, and I've already got a visual, let's stick with it. Camel 1-1, one, one. Cowboy 1-1, one, one. request clearance to refuel. That's him now officially on station. Cowboy 1-1, one, one. Camel 1-1, one, one. copy. So he's copied me, I've got clearance. Cowboy 1-1, one, one. Camel 1-1, one, one. clear to pre-contact position. Boom comes down, I'm clear to pre-contact, so pre-contact I have to hold in front of the uh, boom for, you know, a of, for, for a short time. Basically just until they're happy that I'm stable. Cowboy 1-1, one, one, Camel 1-1, one, one, clear to contact position. There we go. Contact. Cowboy 1-1, one, one, Camel 1-1, one, one, heads up, tanker is entering turn. Okay, so I think we've got about enough fuel for this job. Called on the feeling. Camel 1-1, one, one, topped off and ready to go. 
Roger. Thirty miles out, and we have taken. So you'll see there. That's the direction to the base, and this is the course. So you'll remember from your chart you have to intercept. This particular radial we're looking to intercept. Let's turn off the old autopilot for a moment. Let's head towards the airbase first. Okay, so now we're 11 miles out from radial 050. So if I maintain this course, we'll eventually end up not too far from our intercept point. Which is just, just definitely not working. It's probably going to, we're going to arrive a little close to it. That's fine, because what happens is I'm going to start turning to intercept radial 050. Keeping at under 30 miles out, so I'm way beyond where I'm supposed to be, but that's okay. So that's easily fixed. All we do, we're going to come towards the wrong way slightly. I'm going to descend now because they want me to hit to get to 2,000 feet by the time I get to the end of the arc. It's very, very doable. So I'm less than a mile out from intercepting the arc. And we're going to start turning away. Still below 6,000 feet, but we're hoping to get to there. There's me at 11 miles, so all I have to do now is keep turn rate so that the airbase is always on my right wing. Let's bring the turn in a bit more. Still descending, remember. Turning a bit too hard, so we're going to relax the turn. And all I'm doing is I'm using these markers here, somewhere about the 10 or the 20 degree mark. I'm just kind of bobbing between them until I get a point where I'm kind of happy where I am where with, the, uh, with the rate change. Steady up and let the needle drift around to the right a little. And get down to 2,000 feet. Now look, I'm on the intercept already. Look at the ILS. This could tell me I'm going to have to start levelling off soon. Slightly, oh no, we're going to turn it in slightly more. So we're coming up for 2700. Got our speed much lower down now, so it's a little bit more easy. Things happen a little slower now, which is good. <laughs> and we're under 200 knots, so I plan on dropping the gear again. I'm anticipating that slight pitch down, but that's okay. So the ideal of glide slope is about two and a half to three degrees, which is what that dashed marker represents. That's why you don't see it during landing. Still live miles out, still got that on the right wing there. As I start passing for runway two for heading two hundred and thirty degrees according to the approach plates, I will start making my proper turn. This is a proper this is a much better approach here. You can see what happens when you go too fast or you make yourself go much quicker than you feel like you need to. So, we're at 2,000 feet. We're actually slightly lower than that, but that's okay. So I'm going to throw a little throttle on. I'm going to keep 11 miles. 
as I transition round to 230 degrees, I will then turn the plane even harder and get myself up lined up for approach from my 220. So we're going to prevent, start that up, set that up. Now, there we go. That's me holding at 200, 2000 knots, like 2000 feet altitude. Much more reasonable approach. And we're almost at the point where we're ready to start our turn. I'll level this off a bit until we get the airbase a little bit more lined up on the right wing. We're actually a little close as well, so we're going to turn away slightly. I'll relax the turn slightly to give myself a bit more distance. Once that ticks over to 11 miles, I'll then sharpen the turn again and get myself back on the right. Turn right until it steps back in. There we are. Coming up for 230 degrees, so we're going to start making the turn in harder. So we're going to put that tick, that triangle there at the bottom, all the way down. And I'm going to start my descent as well, about 2000. So at this point now, we're flying that circle. Again, but this time I'll be much better set up. My speed will be much more appropriate. We should see a much better approach on this occasion. Okay, we're a little low. We're on speed. Now we've gone too far over, I think. Yep. So, Takan is off, Eagle's off to the right, so we need to go right. And that's what it's doing for us, it's giving us an intercept. That's what that circle does. Because remember, the runway is set to be two, so why is it telling us to fly north? Well, we're too far over. So, I'm going to keep holding at 2,000 feet until I get. I get it, and look, it's now swinging around to the left because I need to start intercepting. If I keep flying this intercept circle, I will find myself on a decent approach. But during this whole process, I'm still hoping that I will find the, uh, I will find the wrong one. But knowing now how close we are to glide slope. That circle wants to be right on my flight path marker. And I am very, very close to in line now. There we go. Much more like it. However, too fast, which means my glide slope is too high. So I'm going to bring it very down a little. And what I'm looking for now is that for that upper needle to start springing down the way. Because right now I'm probably too high. You can see it coming down. So we're going to continue just keeping our flight relatively level. We're not going to drop too much altitude yet. But eventually what will happen is, there we go, you see the needle snap like that, and the dashed line, uh, the vertical line is no longer dashed, we're now within ILS parameters. And you can see the, the line coming down. So now we need to see how the, the line, see how it's coming down. I'm going to bring the line down and drop it, drop my speed down, right down, it's way too fast. And that, that's, that's, that's a good, that's a good approach there so far. Now we're doing a cockpit check here, I'm on speed, I'm a little low so I'm going to pull the over off the throttle on, flight path markers on the, on the two and a half degree line, I'm going a little fast, we're going to pull back on the throttle and lift the nose up slightly, speed down the green, passing the marker, so hopefully now I should be able to see the run, I can, so I'm now in a position where I'm just going to throw a little throttle on, keep flight path marker here and inside that little ladder and inside that two and ideally you want to on that two and a half degree line. 
I'm going to drop the throttle because we're way too fast again. And there we go. 